What is the best implant surface has been a question for debate since the early 1980s. With Nobel selling smooth machined surface implants, Strauman selling rough, porous, titanium plasma sprayed surface implants, and Corvent selling implants with a textured surface created by luminous oxide blasting followed by hydrofluoric acid etching. By 1991, Corvent started blasting its implants with hydroxyl apatite crystals, creating a medium rough surface without the necessity to acid etch to remove particles. The machined surface Nobel implants proved to be too smooth for good success in soft bone. In about 2004, Nobel introduced Tyunite, a rough, porous surface created by anodizing. Strauman abandoned its rough, porous TPS surface in the late 1990s, replacing it with large grit luminous oxide blasted surface followed by acid etching which was referred to as SLA. Strauman subsequently introduced a premium priced version of this surface called SL Active. This consisted of packaging the SLA surfaced implants in sterile saline to isolate it from carbon deposits from the atmosphere until the time of insertion. Strauman claimed this improved bone attachment by making the surface more hydrophilic. Implant Innovations promoted its osseotite acid etch surface, which was even smoother than the machine surface. Calcitech in the late 1980s promoted a low crystalline HA coated surface coated to the top of their cylindrical implant. That was essentially replaced with a high crystalline HA surface. All of these early blasted surfaces of Strauman, Corvent, and Astra have stood the test of time, as have the HA-coated surfaces. Nobel just modified its Tyunite implants by anodizing the top few millimeters of the implant, creating a very smooth surface to minimize complications from exposed Tyunite. Nobel posted on its website, this meta-analysis of studies reporting favorably on its tie unite surface by Dr. Albertson, one of its paid non-dental opinion leaders. The results of 106 studies, according to Albertson, showed only 5% of the patients had periimplantitis. I always questioned Albertson's veracity after I uncovered in the late 1980s that he and Branamark in a 1983 article had misrepresented as an osteoblast an SEM of a fibroblast that had appeared in a 1982 article. That same phony picture later appeared colorized on the cover of Branamark's textbook. If the Tyunite rough porous surface does not contribute to soft tissue complications and subsequent bone loss, then one might ask why Nobel is now replacing Tyonite on the top few millimeters of its implants with a smoother anodized surface. Here is a copy of an email sent by a periodontist in Toronto to some Nobel sales representatives, and for some reason he copied me on it. He is telling these Nobel reps that at least 25% of his cases with Nobel replaced Tyunite implants are showing, quote, an unacceptably high degree of early bone loss, end of quote. So where does the truth lie? I think you want to have a medium rough textured surface and you want to carry it to the top of the implant. If you have very porous bone and you want to use an implant surface that will improve your chances of success, HA coating should be considered although not necessary with the soft bone surgical protocol incorporated into the legacy and screw vent implant systems. About a decade ago, Nobel's one piece Nobel Direct implant was sold with the porous Tyunite surface extending up the neck into the soft tissue area. Nobel claimed this promoted, quote, soft tissue integration, end of quote. 
That implant was eventually taken off the market after a class action lawsuit was filed by a dentist who had multiple failures with this implant. Apparently, Nobel's answer now is to create a smooth surface on the top few millimeters of the implant by anodizing while claiming that this creates muco integration. The grooves at the top of the Nobel Active are there because that area is intended to be and hopefully remain subcrestal. Anodizing the neck makes it smoother than just leaving it as a machine surface and we know that the Bronemark machine surface implant often experienced bone loss to the first thread. The only rationale to color the neck gold would be if resorption took place exposing it to the soft tissue and then only in the aesthetic zone. From the reference to quote muco integration end of quote it sounds like Nobel anticipates bone loss from this implant, resulting in the gold neck being exposed to the soft tissue. Certainly, there is no rationale for a gold-colored neck in the posterior, and especially not on an all-on-four case as shown here.